18 months ago, our world completely changed, and for a very long time, it seemed like there was no road back to normality. But in one laboratory just outside Oxford, there was a small group of people who had other ideas, and their idea would save the world. I don't think you could ever have been prepared for what really hit us. At the beginning, people were talking about us finding a vaccine as if we would just rummage behind the bins or open one of our freezers. There would be, oh, there it is. I don't think we could even fathom how big a challenge we were facing. And little did I know that the work that I and a colleague did designing this vaccine would lead to where we are today. A record speed, the vaccine had to be designed, manufactured and then trialled on an unprecedented scale. We'd never run any clinical trials quite of this size before. Just in the UK, we had over 12,000 participants. Most people who worked on the trial felt that they had this opportunity to kind of use all the skills that they'd gained to actually really make an impact on the world. I remember being on a radio interview and the interviewer had said, you guys are the only story in the world. And that felt like quite a lot of pressure. There was times that I worried that my children didn't remember who I was. There were moments in this trial where we actually thought, is it possible to take this much stress and pressure and still be OK? And fighting a pandemic during a pandemic created its own challenges. The university went into lockdown. We were living off the vending machines. I was eating mini cheddars and bounty bars, um, which is, I think, two of your five a day, yeah? After a remarkable 12 months, the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine was ready. We just went for it. We started and we didn't stop till we got to the end. The fastest vaccine that was ever done was four years for mumps. Obviously this year we managed to get it all done in less than a year. And unlike many other vaccines, Oxford AstraZeneca is currently made for no profit. Over a billion doses have now been given in over 170 countries. It's not just our families you know, our cousins, our kids. We are reaching the poorest with the Oxford vaccine. The world is slowly getting back to normal. It's so amazing to see people out on the street. It makes me feel like all the hard work we, we put in over the last 18 months has been worth it. When you look at the number of lives which have been saved by the vaccination programme, that's over 100,000 now. That's something really humbling to have been a part of. We truly could not be here tonight without them. Please welcome many of the members from the Oxford vaccine team. Reaction. Yeah, we we we're not used to it. We're not comfortable with it. <laughs> when we saw a card that was sent to you all. Not all heroes wear capes, but truly, you and and the whole team have changed our lives I mean, forever. <laughs> It was only January when uh, Brian Pinker had the first AstraZeneca vaccine. Yeah. Uh, what was that moment like for you? It's a very complex feeling that you have, yeah? We always knew as a team that vaccination would be the way out of this pandemic. And I think back in January 2020, we believed that we might be able to make a contribution to that solution. We always knew that we would have the ability to contribute. It's very humbling to be, have been able to do so. And how? <laughs> and, and how? <laughs> and Mahishi, you were a pro 
discuss all of the clinical trials, which obviously had to take place. How did it feel to be running a clinical trial so quickly and so many people who offered their help for that? Well, that was a really extraordinary thing. Um, back in March last year, the world looked so uncertain yeah. and 25,000 people, not just here in the UK, but overseas in Brazil, South Africa and Kenya, all stepped up and gave of their time and their enthusiasm. And without them doing that, we wouldn't have the data, which meant that we could get this vaccine approved. That means that we can get 1.7 billion doses out in people's arms today. So it's all down to our volunteers. <laughs> Andrew, you, everyone on stage, the wider team, you must be incredibly proud of the part that you've all played in, in saving lives. Uh, I mean, we are actually all pretty ordinary in what we do. I mean, <laughs> we, we, oh, yeah. We, oh, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we've just been doing our normal jobs in an unusual time. But really, it is a great pleasure for us to be receiving an award today. But I think we'd like to receive it on behalf of all of the team, mm. but also the NHS workers who've been out there vaccinating people. Yeah. Absolutely. Well said. And uh, thank you, Karina and Professor Adrian, and congratulations, as you say, to all of the team. It's also very good to see such a strong female scientist. <laughs> <laughs> He is, a, well, he's a British icon of stage and screen and everything, really. And a recipient, he's been double jabbed, uh, of the Oxford vaccine. Please welcome the incomparable Stephen Fry. <laughs> I would have walked 100 miles over broken glass barefoot to be here to present this award. I've presented many awards in my life, usually to people who've made films uh, or appeared in them. I've never heard any one of them, when accepting an award, say, I'm just an ordinary person, really. <laughs> it's only true heroes who don't think that they are heroes. Never has the three words Pride of Britain been more appropriate than in this case. We are all <laughs> astonished. So, Therefore, on behalf of my family, your family, all the people who feel more confident and all the millions, the uncalculatable millions whose lives have been saved and whose happiness has been ensured by this remarkable achievement, I want to give you this award with my greatest, most adoring thanks. Thank you. 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 Thank you.